I believe that now the heart rate sensor is working. So there is a few things that we changed in the uh, Digilent right here. Now, the first thing we changed is our mode. So that, instead of being from repeated, is shift. When we, when we were registering or measuring a signal that's constantly changing, it's better to use shift here. We have to make sure all of these are the same right here. Our level is like negative 1.1. We could adjust that though. That's just is the trigger level where this trigger is at and it moves. Um, I've displayed our measurements here. So I've just clicked measurements. We have our peak to peak maximum and minimum. We built the heart rate circuit or the heart measurement part right here. And I'm adding on to it a little bit for another project. Now the heart rate sensor by itself is not going to include any of this right here. It's just going to include this. So what I'm going to do, because this is our output pin, remember the last pin of our op amp is output. So I changed it from this uh, out here to this potentiometer over here. So what I'm gonna do first, as always, is I'm going to stop our waveforms. Once that is stopped, I can safely remove this output wire. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the channel wire which monitors this into there. So I'm gonna be monitoring the output here. What I'm doing here is gonna be in a computer engineering video. This one is a electronics video and the computer engineering I think is like advanced microprocessors or microcontrollers. And that's what this part is for. This is for the final project. But for this one, what we're trying to do is just see if the heart rate works. Now I've done a little bit of rewiring. I've made everything a little bit closer to the board. I haven't changed too much of the circuit. So we have our anode and our cathode here. The, an the cathode is going to ground the anode is going in from this resistor. This resistor and the anode are in the same column and it's going through this green wire into our power, which is five volts. And then our black photo transistor, photo uh, diode photo LED is going from the power, which is the red rail into the resistor into there. And then it's gonna go into ground. We have a capacitor that goes in here. And I'm really just following the circuit schematic, just changing a few things about how it's oriented. So this is exactly how it's going to look. And we talked about this in the previous video. We didn't get it working, but we can just compare what we have to what was in that circuit. So everything is built here. Everything is correct. Again, we did not change that much. This is negative five volts. This is ground. This is power. This is grounding our channel because we have our channel one that we're going to be looking at. So we're grounding our channel and then we have our channel on the output, so we're monitoring the output here. So now if we put our finger over here, it should be working. I'm just gonna put my finger like this, and hopefully it will register. So first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to run this. I'm gonna hover over the play button, and then just run all. Or actually, I'm not gonna run all because we have our wave gen here. I want to run the supplies, and I want to run our scope, and it's going to look like this at first. So from here, it's going to go down to about zero volts, and now I'm going to just put my fingerprint on it right now. So I just rested my finger on it and it'll look like this. Hopefully it will stabilize a little bit. So we can see that it is going between about 5 volts and negative 5 volts, which is a little bit more than what it had on the uh, wiki page. It was, I believe, between negative like almost 4 volts and 4 volts, but this is pretty close. If I move my fingerprint off a little bit, we can possibly get a smaller signal. There's a lot of noise still, it, it seems, but if we are to just lay our fingerprint down, like I'll lay it all the way down, it'll look like this. So actually laying the fingerprint down more helps it. So this is more like what we have in our the wiki page that we're going off of. This is what it looks like, and it looks like now we have done our circuit correctly. This will be implemented in our microprocessor, and that video will come up shortly. But we have finished the heart rate sensor. All we did was change this to shift, um, make sure that we're looking at our maximum minimums, but this is not for the current project. This is for the microprocessors. We have our channel one selected, offset zero volts, and our range is two volts, just so we can see two volts right here and our supplies are both five volts and negative five volts. So that is gonna be it for this lab. It's concluded, I believe it works. And that is how we would do this laboratory. 
what I'm doing here is really just shortening some of the wires. So we can see that I'm pulling out the long wires and replacing those short ones because this will give us less noise. The longer a wire is, the more something can touch it, the more things can combine together, and that will give us more noise. So it's important to always keep your wires close to the board. That's why I typically trim my resistors to make them super short and use the shortest possible wires. But also, make sure the wire is long enough to do one complete run to where you're going. That way you don't have to use multiple wires. After I shorten this, what I'm doing is just testing the potentiometer for my other class that this is used for. But I'm also testing it on the laptop. You can see I have it connected to my MacBook where I am using the potentiometer to just make the waveform a little bit smaller. So making it smaller, um, I'm able to adjust it. Hopefully I can move it above the zero on the y-axis because I want a positive voltage output. And that's going to be it for this project and how we would look at the circuit and the debugging that has come along with it. Um, we learned how to debug in the last video and super important, super proud of that. And now this is a pretty well-rounded part two complete.